Hey, what's up guys? In today's YouTube video, I'm gonna be showing you how to pass your horizontal and your vertical 3 8 plates open root weld test with a 6010 root and a 7018 fill and cap. Now, I already have these coupons tacked up. Again, you always want a smooth surface to tack on. If you don't have a smooth surface to tack on, you can use another coupon or another piece of metal to set your coupons on and to tack them together with, okay? So, we already have two tacks on each coupon, the front and the back, and the top and the bottom. This is a very common test for a lot of high school students in the state of Kentucky. Um, a lot of students can choose to take a vertical or an overhead test for their DOT exam. Some students choose to take a horizontal. It just depends, but we see a lot of students working on these two across the state of Kentucky. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my 6010 rod and my stinger. Now I have an eighth inch land on each knife edge bevel, okay? So I have an eighth inch land on this piece, eighth inch land on this piece, eighth inch land here, and an eighth inch land here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my horizontal root. Now I wanna mention, whenever you tack up a weld test, whenever you tack up a competition, whenever you tack up for anything, make sure that it is somewhere that you're comfortable with and that is easy to access. I have my horizontal here and my vertical here and I can easily weld both of these out and be very comfortable the whole time. So I'm always, I'm always right here. I'm always right here. Makes it quick, makes it smooth, makes it easy, okay? So whenever you're tacking up for any of these things, don't put your coupons in weird spots where you can't get to them. Make it easy for yourself. So with that being said, I am ready to go ahead and put my root in on this horizontal. So I have my temperature set at 75, and I'm just gonna run this root in here. I'll probably turn it up to 80 because it may be a little bit cold, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And what I'm gonna do is with this horizontal, I'm really not gonna whip it in and out. I'm just kinda of gonna drag it. So let's get into it. All right guys, so I'm, I'm going ahead firing up with this. And I'm dragging it at 80 amps. The root's going in good, it's going in nice. I got the rod in there perfectly on the top and the bottom. And you just kinda of drag it. I like to drag horizontals. I really don't like to whip them just because you can get kind of um, out of place with them. And see, I just uh, stuck the rod there and it's okay if it's not all right and going smooth, but the backside looks good here. Um, this is what you wanna see on the backside and we can get a shot of that here in a second, but that is what you want to see. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a fresh rod just so I don't have to restart again with that one. So I just stuck the rod, no big deal. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a fresh rod because if you're taking a weld test or you're competing in a competition, you don't want to use um, rods that might have stuck or anything extra. I just like to keep it all clean, keep it fresh. I always grab a new rod if something happens in these conditions. If you're not able to, go ahead and use it. But if you have access to more, grab them. So it's always better to have more than what you need for welding. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up again on this. All right, guys. So we're gonna go ahead and get back in this. And we're just dragging the root. Dragging it in there. You want to keep pressure on the rod at all times. So we're going to go ahead and fire up at 80 amps. And sometimes you're going to have to find your temperature like that. Perfect. So this is going way better. And we're just keeping the rod shoved in there and all the flames going on the back side. Back and forth, you just go back and forth with it. Keep the rod shoved in there. All right, and that is all you do for the horizontal route. You find a good temperature, and you just drag it in there, that's what I do. So 85 amps turned out to be the good temperature for me to put in a good root horizontal. Now, at first I thought it was gonna be 75, but I had to adjust it as I went. So 85 turned out to be a good amperage for me. Also, whenever I restart, I start about an inch ahead 
of where I stopped on the keyhole, I fire up and I just slowly drag into it. That way it gets it hot and it pushes in and it makes it look like I never did a restart. We're gonna go ahead and work on this vertical open root. Now the temperature that I start with on this is around 75 amps. I'm gonna crack it down to about 80 just because of the temperature. So we're gonna start in on this vertical 6010 open root. I got my machine to 80 amps. So let's go ahead and put this thing in. All right, so we're gonna fire up and we're gonna punch it in there. And we're just working up and down, up and down. But we keep the rod pushed in there. We wanna keep it pushed in the whole time. I put a little bit of up and down movement in it and you just want to keep the rod in there. You want all your sparks on the back side. And we're gonna fire up again. I had to turn it down a little bit to about 75 instead of 80. And again, we're just working that rod up and down, up and down. Every time we go up, we burn some. And then every time we come back down, we kind of just solidify that puddle. Now that we got our roots in for the horizontal and vertical test pieces, it's time to run our 718 fill and cap. So I've already ground the root on both of these. Again, at our national senior competition, you can grind the roots. You're allowed to bring a grinder. And also if you're taking a weld test, you definitely need to grind that root. Um, you need to take out all of that extra slag and metal that the 6010 puts out on the inside of this root. So I already ground that out. Let's go ahead and put the hot pass in with 7018. So I'm running at 90 amps. Let's go ahead and burn this in here. All right, so I got this at 90 amps. Putting this hot pass in here. Just gotta go real slow and make sure that everything's burning in there. And I put a little bit of a wiggle motion in it and then a 15 degree drag angle. Can you see that pretty good? Gonna fire up on my vertical, run this hot pass. Again, got it at 90 amps. We're running it really smooth, just working our way up. And what I'm doing when I'm welding these 718s is I wanna look behind the rod or below the rod and make sure that that puddle is following me up.
All right, there you have it. The horizontal and vertical hot pass is complete. So I'm gonna go ahead and chip my slag and I'll probably cap my horizontal. I may have to put a filler pass on my vertical. So let's take a look. So now that we have our vertical and horizontal pieces hot pass, I'm gonna go ahead and run some eighth inch rod on this horizontal. And I'm gonna go ahead and cap it just because I have enough metal in there to go ahead and cap it with an eighth inch 7018. I got it at about 120 amps. So I'm gonna go ahead and cap this horizontal piece off and just get it out of the way. Moving this one nice and slow. 120 amps, eighth inch rod. Just taking it real easy, trying to cover up as much as I can. All right, so there's the first pass on the cap with this 718. Then I'm gonna go ahead and run my second stringer on here for the cap as well. So the horizontal weld is capped. Now it's time to run the vertical cap. So we've got our horizontal done. You don't have to think about it no more. It's out of your way. Go ahead and move on to the vertical as well. All right, so I got my machine back at 90 amps. I got a 332 7018. I'm gonna go ahead and start on this vertical cap. So I'm gonna get comfortable. I'm gonna go ahead and fire up. Working myself. Working this rod just really slow, trying to make sure to tie into everything. Taking it really slow, making sure we burn this 718 in there. We're gonna grab us another rod, grab an eighth inch rod. I need to grab a 332.
All right, so this side is completed. We're gonna go ahead and chip that slag. I'm gonna wire wheel it a little bit. I'm gonna turn it down two amps so that I can make this next pass even better than the first one. Because again, your first pass on the cap is really gonna kinda get your temperature set right and your parameters. So now that I know, I can turn it down and make this one look fabulous. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fire up and work it really smooth, work it easy. Got a 15 degree angle going downwards, watching behind the puddle, making sure that the puddle's following my rod, just melting that line and moving up through there. This was always the hardest bead to put on a cap, the last one, because you don't want any undercut. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these off. So that is how you do your 2G and your 3G 6010-7018 open root plate tests, or if you're coming to the KWI National Senior Competition, that is what you're gonna be doing. Um, basically, you want to set yourself up for success. You don't want any chokeholds or bottlenecks with your system. Clean it, tack it, weld it, do it all in a smooth manner. And then also another thing, if you're welding thick or thinner plates than this, you may need to add less or more passes when you're filling it up. So for these two coupons, I did the route anywhere from 70 to 85 amps, then both hot passes at 90 amps with 332, 7018. And then I capped the horizontal with eighth inch 7018 at 120 amps. And then I capped the vertical with 332.718 at 90 to 85 amps. Those are my parameters and temperatures. They may work for you, they may not work for you because welding is a science experiment. All you need to do is go in your booth, change one thing at a time, temperature, speed, angle, and then practice it. If it makes a better change, keep it. If it makes a bad change, don't use it anymore, go back to where you was at. So with welding, it's a science experiment. Change one thing at a time, do one improvement each weld and you will slowly get better over a longer period of time. Don't change four different things in one setting and then wonder why you can't figure it out. So just keep it simple, do one thing at a time to progressively make you better at whatever you're practicing on with welding. If you like this video and it helped you out, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel and down below comment what you need help with so we can help you on our next video. Till then, keep burning rods and I'll catch you on the next one.